Thank you very much, and, and it's great to see so many people, whatever your views are, whether you're for or against or undecided, you're here, and I'm glad to see public meetings are being regenerated to show that people are interested in politics again. Now, my journey to independence is strange, but then so many things I do are, but that's for my biography. <laughs> in 43 years ago, it's the first time I voted for independence, 43 years ago, I know, I was very young, <laughs> and I did it as a tactical vote. I was actually a Labour voter at the time, mm -hmm. and I found that I had no option, so I voted for the Scottish National Party for independence. And then I began, and it was very hard to do that, because when you've held a view all your days to change, you feel treacherous. And I can understand if there's anybody in here who feels they're betraying previous party loyalties or even previous loyalties to United Kingdom by considering voting yes. I understand that. It's very hard to do, because I did it myself. And for a while I thought, I wonder if I've done the right thing. Now, I've never regretted it. Because even all those years ago, I found social justice at the heart of what that party wanted, at the heart of it. But first, independence. Now, the point about this is that independence is not something airy fairy. Independence is the means to an end for a just and equal society, as both of these gentlemen have said. That's what it's about. It's about democracy, it's about social justice. Now, I have to go back to 1979 because then we were being told, firstly, before the oil, you're too poor to be independent. Then when the oil was discovered, we were too rich and too greedy to be independent. And on the eve of that poll, Lord Hume came on the television and I'd been out campaigning in the snow for a Scottish assembly then and said, vote no, and we will give you something better. And we've got nothing. And we've got nothing for decades. Now, the same thing's happening again. The Better Together No campaign, their project is called by them Project Fear. So they've tried, you're too poor, although we're getting that again. We've not had, you're too rich and greedy, but now it's fear tactics that's been used against everything that is said. And when one fear tactic fails, another one comes out. Your mobile phones will be extra cost. That fell by the wayside. Other things are falling by the wayside. So what were oh, people weren't going to get their pensions paid until Steve Webb, the pensions minister, said, you will get your pension paid. It's an entitlement, not a benefit. It's a contract, you will get it paid. So all these things have fallen by the wayside, but they, they can stick to people and stick to their mind. So here we are again with the, oh no, and we'll give you something better. Now, you can make a fool of me once, but you're not going to do it again. Mm -hmm. And why is there no other question on the ballot paper? Why is there no question about Devo Max, Devo Extra, Devo Plus? Because Westminster wouldn't have it on the ballot paper. It was Westminster that decided it will be a yes or a no. And I think that was done then because they thought this will be a squish. Scotland won't have the nerve or the confidence or the ambition to even consider voting yes. And now that it's getting a bit squeaky for them, a bit difficult, out of all of this comes these Jam tomorrow. Jam tomorrow. I don't even know what kind of flavour of jam they're <laughs> promising. What's Conservatives promising? What are Labour promising? As for the Liberal Democrats, they can't deliver anything because they'll have to be in coalition. And we know when they go into coalition, principles go by the wayside. The thing about independence is you know what you're getting. You're getting the right to exercise your power at the ballot box at a general election. To say to yourself, who I vote for matters. Scotland will get what it decides to vote for. And you know, I've even said, somebody said to me, Christine, if Scotland's independent and at a general election, the Conservatives get into power, what will you do? I says, I'll accept it. Because democracy is not conditional. 
Democracy is exactly what it says. You give people the vote and you give them the right to vote for whichever party they want. So that's the important thing about it. Now the other thing to say is that we've learned over the last 15 years. I've been in the Scottish Parliament 15 years. We've done good things. And I say we. I don't mean the Scottish National Party. I mean the Parliament, collectively. The Parliament introduced free personal care. So if you're at home and you're elderly and you need help with dressing or to tie your shoelaces to open that tin of baked beans, you don't pay for it. That doesn't happen south of the border. We have three prescriptions. Why do we have them? Because if you're taking a pink pill in hospital next week, why should you have to pay, like England, £8.50 for that pink pill because you're taking it at home? And in fact, what people were doing in Scotland was, if they had to pay for them, they were deciding which ones to get. If they had three or four in the prescription, they were actually saying to the doctor, what one can I do without? That's disgraceful. Healthcare should be free at the point of being paid for by our taxes. Our children do not pay tuition fees. It's £9,000 a year a whack if you want to be at university or college in England. I've been at university. I came from a working class background. I came from a council house scheme with five children. What we did then was I got free education. I went to university on ability, not on ability to pay. Scotland delivered that. Now, the problem for us in that parliament is we have a block grant. So when we get something coming in our direction, a whammy like the bedroom tax, where you've got people in the border, say living in Walkerburn or in Leeds or Peebles or Hoyt, with two bedrooms using one, they're expected to move. Where are they going to move to? <laughs> Who can move from Peebles to Hoyt? It's not possible. But it was a solution to a London problem. I say a London problem. So what did the Scottish Government, the Scottish Government do? They've got a fund together to help people pay to alleviate the bedroom tax so they can stay where they are. So we get bad things thrown at us, which means what we've got to use first aid almost for the damage being done by Westminster. When we introduce free personal care, we have saved 40,000, 40, I beg your pardon, 40 million a year to Westminster in paying attendance allowance. So they kept that money. So when we do things that save them from paying benefits, we don't get to keep it to put it somewhere else. It stays. So it's unequal. It is not equal. And already you've mentioned things that we can't do anything about. Iraq war. The Scottish people in the majority did not want to go to war in Iraq, but we were taken there. The majority of the Scottish people don't want Trident costing trillions or son of Trident turning up on the Clyde. But it's there. And it's American fingers that will press the button. We can't do anything about it. We're not at the EU. We don't sit at the EU negotiating. Richard Lockhead's outside the door. He's not allowed in. Because Scotland isn't an independent nation. We're not at United Nations. Luxembourg's there, tiny wee Luxembourg. By the way, it can vote about Scottish fishing. There's not even got any seas. And Scotland can't do any. So we are powerless where it matters. We're powerless over tax. We're powerless over benefits. We're powerless over wars. We're powerless over weapons. These are the big issues. And I have to say, we are quite capable in the Scottish Parliament of dealing with these matters now. Or, if you don't think we are, you can vote in better people when we are independent. Now, I want to tell you two stories of two groups of young people I've met this week. Just so happened to be like this. A group of Norwegian pupils came in to Parliament. It's this long story about getting involved with Norway, but it's to do with one of my sisters. But there we are, I'll tell you about that later. But anyway, these these Norwegian <coughs> students coming in. And they're all sitting around the table and they were asking about Scottish independence. And I knew quite a lot about Norway. Because, of course, Norway discovered oil and gas at the same time as the UK discovered oil and gas. But what did Norway do with its money? It said, it's like winning the lottery. I'm not spending it all this week, blowing it all on a Lamborghini, completed. I'm not doing that. 
Norway set up its oil fund, worth now trillions. The interest on the money in the oil fund is almost as much as they're drawing out of the North Sea. They are so wealthy, they are a major investor across Western Europe, which brings more money into the Norwegian economy. When their banks got into trouble, Norway could deal with it because it had this big rainy day fund. It also owns 76% of Statoil, the company that draws the oil out. What's the position in the UK? Is there an oil fund? Zilch. Not a penny in it. Who owns the oil companies? America, Japan, you name it, Japan. not us. Who owns our energy companies? French people own their energy companies. We have not just sold off the family silver, we've sold off all the white goods, the furniture, the lot. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I found on the internet, and I'm not very good at the internet, but I found this, <laughs> there is a rolling thing like a clock, and it shows you how the national UK debt is increasing by the day. We are living on tick. What you said is absolutely right. Retail is concealing the fact that the recession is deeper and deeper. And you have to know that the alternative for not having independence is great big cuts coming down the road. As there's a general election, we don't have independence. You will get them. You just look at this clock, you will find out. They're all keeping quiet about it because they don't want us to know what lies ahead. Back to my Norwegian pupils. So I was surprised them when I said what I knew about Norway and about the Royal Fund. And I saw these confident young people taking for granted. This was the thing, they just took it for granted that their country was socially just. They took it for granted they had an Royal Fund. So today, what do I have in? I have in some youngsters from Borders College Pretty deprived youngsters that came in. Great kids. Every year they come in. These kids were struggling to find an apprenticeship, to even get to an interview. I said, what do you want? I just want a job. And having been with these Norwegian students and seen the vibrancy and how it was just ordinary for them to have this lifestyle and this future before them and to see these other young people who were despairing of what lay ahead for them in current circumstances was deeply saddening. Because you see, this vote isn't like any other vote. My God, it's not. Imagine having the democratic right to cast a vote for or against your country's independence. Not a bullet, not threats, not tanks on the street, just a ballot box and leave yourself in there with a cross in front of you. And you're right, it's about confidence. It's about confidence in yourself, your neighbour, the future for your children and your grandchildren. Against the background that in our heads we know we can do. We've got the resources. Don't believe we haven't. We've got the resources. We've got the talent. We've got the people. What we lack sometimes is just that bit of self-belief. And I've held on to that through thick and thin for 43 years. And I'm no one let down. <laughs> and can I say to Molly, hey, Molly, pay attention. <laughs> when I convert this woman, <laughs> I've tried. we're one. <laughs>